Hey guys, welcome to Rotor Riot. I'm Ladriv, and today we're doing a build. We're building my signature two inch micro frame, the Driblet. I say two inch because it spins two inch propellers. This is gonna be a small, compact build. I love micros because you can fly them anywhere. The consequences are a lot lower than when you're flying a full blown pro grade five inch mini quad. And uh, best of all, it's a lot cheaper. It's a great way to get into this whole thing. And actually, you can buy a lot of these kind of micro class drones pre-built. And if that's something you're interested in, check the link in the description for our full selection of bind and fly or ready to fly micro drones. But if you wanna start enjoying the building aspect of this hobby, come along, we're doing a build. These micros are a great place to start because like I said, things are cheaper. The build is also going to be simpler overall, so you're gonna be able to bang it out a lot faster. The only downside is that the components are smaller, so your work is gonna be a little bit more precise. However, if you can learn to build these micros and do some of the smaller soldering, then when you do step up to do like a, a five inch quad, it's gonna be a lot easier. Let's get right into what we're working with today. Like I said, we're gonna be using my signature micro frame, the Driblet. Main plate, some hardware, some gummies, side plates, battery straps, a little back plate, battery pad, stickers, all sorts of goodies for the frame. So as far as motors go, we're gonna be using Hype Train Dab Motors. These are an 1104, 7500 kV. So they're really small, really lightweight, but that high kV makes them very responsive and really good for a small two inch propeller. For electronics, we're gonna be building around the Diatone Mamba stack. Four ESCs on one board and your flight controller on another board. So this is, this is pretty much a drone. And for the FPV gear, we've got some products from Runcam. This is the Runcam Robin. Very good performance in a micro form factor. And the video transmitter is also by Runcam. This is the Runcam TX200U. And what's cool about this video transmitter is it can actually stack on the back of your camera, just like that, just like a backpack. So you've got your FPV gear all in one. As you'll see, that's not how we're going to do the build in this case, um, but it is convenient for other applications. And for my receiver, I've got a Beta FPV DSMX compatible receiver, something that will bind up to my Spectrum radio, and it has a very small form factor. That's the thing with these micros, you're looking for small, lightweight components, keep it light, and being able to fit everything is also pretty important. The first step is going to be mounting our stack to our base plate. Now if you take a look at the base plate, you've got, got a bunch of holes going on here. These inside holes, this is a 16 by 16 bolt pattern. There are some new, really compact uh, flight controllers and ESC stacks coming out that use 16 by 16, so if you really wanna get this squeezed down, this frame will support that. But the diatone stack that we are using, it's gonna use the outside set of holes. That is 20 by 20. Still very small, but a little bit larger. It's gonna make things easier to work on. The holes for the 20 by 20, they're actually three millimeters in diameter. So you can fit an M3 screw in there. So if that's something that you're gonna be working with, you won't have a problem. But the 20 by 20 stacks that I prefer, I'll use M2 hardware. So what you're going to do to step down the three millimeter hole to a two millimeter hole is you're gonna get these gummies. Using these gummies is gonna give you an additional advantage because it's going to soft mount the entire stack. Soft mounting is going to uh, isolate the gyro, isolate the sensors, and allow your flight controller to work with much cleaner signals. So I just like to kind of squeeze it. Maybe you have to grab a little tool. Got my tweezers here, which we are gonna be using these tweezers a lot, as you'll see. Try and poke it through. Not to be too rough with it. You don't wanna rip the rubber, but it's pretty tough stuff. There you go, you got it in there. I haven't done a couple of these. I think the easier way to do it is to insert the gummy from the side without the recessed part here because your battery is gonna go there, so you don't want your battery matched up against the hardware. I think it's easier to go in from the non-recessed side, so that part where you can get right to the hole, pinch it, push it through a little bit with the tweezers. These needle nose tweezers are great. This side where the gummies protrude, that's where your stack is going to go. Let's do a little bit of a test fit. I'm just gonna hold our stack there. These side plates, as we'll get to later on, are gonna install there, and uh-oh, it's hitting it's hitting the stack. We're gonna have to make a little bit of an adjustment. We need this stack to sit lower. There are M2 spacers on the bottom of the stack and in the middle of the stack. We're gonna 
remove them from the bottom. We're gonna see if we can mount it a little bit differently. We can go ahead and unplug this all together. So we've got the four in one board separated out here and we're gonna mount it to the frame. We're not using the stock hardware. Again, we wanna lower it down. And what you're gonna need to get is four M2 by 12 screws and four M2 nuts. You might be able to find this type of hardware at a uh, hardware store, but for your convenience, we also have it available in the Rotorite store. We're gonna slide the M2 by 12 millimeter screw up through the bottom of the frame. Again, the bottom is the side with the recesses. Then we are going to thread an M2 nut. The nut is essentially going to be our spacer. Sometimes you can get it all the way down just with your fingers. We've got our screws and our nuts. And now we're gonna take these white spacers that were part of the stack, slip them down. There's a little lip for centering the board. You want that lip facing upward because the board is gonna sit on top of it. Now we're going to drop our four in one board onto these screws, but pay attention to orientation. They've actually marked the numbers for each motor. You want the number one motor to be in the back right corner and the number two motor to be in the front right corner. So we just set that on top like that. All right, we're gonna take one of our leftover spacers and just thread it onto the board just to hold the board in place while we solder. That's all we need. It is motor time. Grab one of your hype train dab motors. We are going to mount it to the arm and then we're going to solder the motor to the foreign one. Each motor comes with a bunch of screws to find the right length. You want it to go through the carbon, but not touch the windings. Double and triple check that. You really don't want the screws of the motors to touch the windings. It doesn't hurt to double check. So yeah, we can use the long screws to go through the frame and up into the motor. Depending on your frame, maybe you wanna use the short screws. Just be really careful with that because it, it can ruin your motors if the screws touch the windings. You can screw on all four motors and then solder all four motors and that might be more efficient because you're not picking up and putting down your tool as much. And then the wires are kind of all in the way. So we're just gonna do one motor all the way soldered up at a time. While you are soldering, what you don't want is you don't want blobs of solder falling onto your work. So I'm gonna take some electrical tape, stick it over there. Actually, that fits really well. Look at that. That's a lot of protection we got there. We'll remove that later, but that's just to give us protection while we're soldering. TS-100 soldering iron. This is my favorite tool. Not only really small and compact and what I use on the field, but I end up just using this tool on the bench. It's my full-time soldering iron. While that heats up, we are going to cut our wires to length. So I'm just gonna kind of run them along the arm and we are just gonna solder them straight to the pads and then we'll fix motor direction later. So when you solder, what you're going to want to do is pre-tin the wire and pre-tin the pad. So get solder on the two things that you're soldering together, then hold them together, apply heat so that the solder flows, flows into each other, gets all continuous. We are holding the iron to the pad and applying solder to the pad. There it is, repeat. All right, all three of our pads are tinned. Same thing with the wires. Apply heat to the wire and apply solder to the wire until it flows. A small tip is I always keep in mind how I'm gonna be holding my tweezers. So if I start with the wire that's over here on this side, then as I work, my tweezers are gonna be pushing into the wires that are already done. So we're gonna work from this side this way, if that makes sense. So grab the wire. You know, you know what, this frame is moving around. We're just gonna tape the whole damn frame down, there we go. We're holding the pre-tin wire onto the pre-tin pad, applying heat, it flows together. Once the wires are soldered, just gonna flatten the wires down on the arm, grab these long stickers, wrap it around to hold the wires down. Look how nice that looks, yes. So from start to finish, you mount your motor to the frame, run your wires to the foreign one, cut them to length, strip the wires, pre-tin the wires, pre-tin the pads, solder them together. Do the same for the other three corners. I like to put in the two screws kind of loosely and then tighten them up all the way. I 
actually, by the way, I'm being stupid putting the stickers on before I, I actually test. You should really do the stickers kind of like last because I have no idea if any of these components might be dead for whatever reason. Stuff happens, we'll risk it. I wanna show you how it works right now. I'm impatient. We've got one more thing to solder here. That's the connector for the battery. Diatone is nice enough to include some wire and an XT30 connector and, oh wow, it's got a capacitor. You know what, I rarely use capacitors, but if they're gonna throw one in the kit, I think I'll throw it in here. So we've got our wire that's gonna be our, our power lead. So it's gonna attach there and we know that it needs to hook around because the battery is bottom mounted. So it's gonna be something like that. So I'm just kind of guesstimating about there. I'd leave it a little longer because you could always shorten it later. It's more of a pain to lengthen it. Two and a little extra drib thumbs wide. I, no, here, we'll measure this for you, we'll measure. Uh, it's about five centimeters. They've got the end of the wire pre-tinned for you. I do not trust the solder that comes from the factories. Uh, they're lead free, it's just not as good. So you can either cut that off and strip it and retin it, or just flood it with some of your own solder. And I'm gonna do that so you can see. Again, we wanna cover up the component while we're soldering on it. We taped it that way before, but now we're working here. We're not working on this anymore, so now we're just gonna tape it this way. There we go. Plus, we're gonna use red, minus, we're gonna use black. This is just like we did before. The wires are just a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, that's a nice one right there. All right, while we're in here, let's add this capacitor. The line with the stripes, that's your negative side. That's going to attach to the black side. The line with no stripes, that's your red side, that's your positive. We don't need these long of stems, so we're just gonna cut them off. We're just gonna kind of hold it on here. looks pretty good. And now we are done soldering to our four in one. We're gonna add our flight controller to this stack. We need these spacers. There's not gonna be a super clean way to do this. We're just gonna disassemble everything. I just grab the spacers and thread them on by hand. This hardware is small, so you don't, you don't wanna over torque it. Just get it snug. Whoop. If you knock off one of these spacers, set it back on the threads. Again, you want the small lip facing toward the board, so it's facing up. Got our board again. It looks like there's two plugs here and you don't need to use this smaller one. It wasn't plugged into anything. Maybe there's some other diatone accessory that you can use, we're not gonna use it. All right, plug in the foreign one. Just lift this up and over, set it on the threads. We are looking good. Pick those nuts back up, thread it on. Now, I, I don't have a socket that's this size, I should. I'm gonna be working on micros, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get it as tight as I can with my fingers, and then I'm gonna grab my tweezers, and this is a little monotonous, but if you don't have the socket, I'm just gonna snug it up like this. You don't need to over tighten it too much because this board also has soft mounting in the board itself, so again, we have soft mounting in the frame that's kind of soft mounting the entire stack, and then we've got rubber grommets in the flight boards. So we've got two stages of vibration isolation, so this should make for a very clean and well-performing machine. Thing is mounted, let's do another fitment check. We have fitment. Um, it is a little bit close, and if you wanna lower it even further, look, there's tons of room between the four-in-one and the flight controller. So you could get smaller spacers, but I don't want you to have to deal with picking up too much extra hardware, so you can just use it as is if you want, and it'll work out. Now it's time to solder the other components to the flight controller. But what's what? I don't know. Check, what do we got here? Underside of this, I almost threw this away. Watch, watch out all the pieces of paper that you throw away. On the back side of this label, there's your detail diagram. First thing is we're gonna grab one of the harnesses that came with our camera. We're gonna solder this to our flight board, and this is gonna plug into our camera. We've got three wires, red's power, black is ground, yellow is video, and that's gonna go to the flight board, so the flight board is both gonna power the camera as well as receive the video. And the reason that we're soldering the video to the flight board is because the video is going to go from the camera into the flight board, and as we'll see later, it'll go out from the flight board to the video transmitter, and that's going to allow the flight controller to overlay an on-screen display 
on your video feed, which is going to let you get information about your aircraft while you're flying, like battery voltage and time flying, as well as access the Betaflight on-screen display where you can do things like PID tuning and change other settings, including your video transmitter channel, which is super convenient. Screw hitting those buttons. We need to use the 5 volt ground and video in. So that is the third, fourth, and fifth pads away from the front of the board. So let's tin those so that we see exactly which ones we are going to use. All right, our camera is up here, but like that, I just, I just like eyeballing things, you know? About three and a half centimeters. Stripping the wires, pre-tinning the wires. It's a little bit harder, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the wire so that it's falling back over the flight board. The easier thing to do would be to just hang it off like that. The wires are coming out of the sides. It's just going to be a little bit neater if I can pull it off like this. This is a little bit, little bit trickier, but keeps things clean. These pads are really small, so with the pad pretend and the wire pretend, I barely even had to touch. I was just like dit, and it was, it was done. Maybe I could have gone down in heat, but it's kind of, it's, it's kind of. I think it's better to use a little higher heat and less time on the pad. Next up on our list, let's do our video transmitter. Like I said before you can mount this thing on the back of your camera, which is convenient for some builds, but depending on the stack that you're using, it might run into the stack. So I'm not sure if it would clear with this one, but I'm just not even gonna bother. We're just going to uh, mount it another way that I'll show you, but let's get it soldered up. This is meant to plug directly into the camera, which again is for convenience, but we don't wanna hook up the camera that way because we are gonna be feeding the video into the flight controller and then back out into the video transmitters. What that means is we don't want to use this plug because this plug would get the video straight from the camera to the video transmitter. We wouldn't be getting the on-screen display capability that we want. Let's just cut off the plug. We're gonna solder this yellow wire to the flight board so that the video signal can get from the flight board to the video transmitter, and we're not gonna use this power and ground wire. So let's go ahead and just desolder those wires. The wires are removed. I'm double checking that I didn't bridge the pads or anything. Looks good. Got our yellow wire ready for soldering. Right next to it is a green wire. This is your telemetry wire. This is going to be soldered to a UART pad on the flight controller, and it's going to allow your flight controller to control your video transmitter. Uh, you might have heard this referred to as smart audio. That is one very common protocol. This particular video transmitter actually uses TRAMP telemetry, which is just another language, but it does the same things that you might have heard about in which your flight controller can control the channel, band, power output of your video transmitter, super convenient. And lastly, down here, we've got our power and ground, and this is what's gonna deliver power to the video transmitter. Now this little baby video transmitter, it's five volts. If you've uh, built before, you know most video transmitters, especially the larger ones, will require a larger voltage. Um, this one, you cannot power higher than 5.5 volts, so it'll, it'll burn out, so. Just keep that in mind, five volt video transmitter. Again, we're not gonna use this lead. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up floating it above the flight board. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So I guess this can pass right over here. Solder there, and those can go there. All right, um, something else I wanna do is I wanna rotate this antenna all the way around. I've got some heat shrink here. So I wanna just wrap this stuff up. You are covering up the button. But again, we're gonna hook up our telemetry so we're not ever gonna need to use that button. All right, so looking down the side again, one down from where we soldered video in, we've got another five volt, then ground, then TX3. That is the transmitter pad of UART3. And when I say transmitting, what that means is the flight controller transmits a signal to another component. So that's the pad that we're going to want to use for our telemetry because the flight controller is going to send a signal to the video transmitter to tell it what channel it should be on. And then one below that pad is the video out. So again, flight controller sends the video signal to the video transmitter after it has overlaid the on-screen display. So it's just the next four pads down from where we already worked. Got a little too much solder on that one, so we just clean the tip over here. And revisit that, wipe, wick away some of it. There we go, that's better. Three, four. All right, let's start with five volt ground pretend. Now this is where I mentioned that soldering these smaller components, a little bit precise. So just take your time. It's not lining up, just back away, reset. The wire wasn't lining up the way I wanted, so just get out of there. 
That's where we want it, right there. Whoops, looking pretty good. The green wire and the yellow wire end in roughly the same place. But the green wire is a lot longer. I'm just gonna trim them so they're the same. Just again, keeping things clean as we go. Right below the ground wire, we've got the TX wire. Here we go. Now we're making some pretty good progress here. We've got our lead for the camera. We've got our video transmitter. The last thing that we need to connect to the flight controller is your receiver. This is the component that receives the signal from your transmitter and then tells the flight controller what you want it to do. So looking at this little receiver, we've got a pad labeled S, G, and 5V. So that's signal, ground, and five volts. This is another five volt accessory. Let's check our connection diagram for what we're looking for. There are still some pads open in the row that we were working on. We've got another five volt and ground pad, but there isn't a good place to input the signal. There's a pad labeled S bus. And now if you are using an S bus receiver for FreeSky, then just work in the same pad. Use five volt, ground, and S bus we are using a DSMX receiver. S-Bus is an inverted signal and DSMX is a non-inverted signal. So you need to use a pad that's expecting a non-inverted signal. So if it's labeled for S-Bus, it's not gonna work on another protocol like Spectrum or Crossfire. So we're gonna go down to this lower pad and we've got ground, five volt, TX3 and RX3. Ooh, wait a minute, don't use three. We used UART3 in the row that we were already working on. UART 3 is being used for your video transmitter telemetry. And each UART, one, two, three, four, however many you have, can only be used for one function. So don't use three. Let's keep looking. Okay, we've got TX6 and RX6. We'll use UART 6. And the pad that you want is RX6. That's because the receiver has a signal that it is sending to the flight controller. The flight controller wants to receive it so it knows what it you know, needs to do. So we're gonna use the pad labeled RX6. All right, so let's prepare the receiver. We've got the raw board, we've got some wire, we've got an antenna, and we've got some heat shrink. So let's get these wires attached. So the wire they gave us, we've got black, red, and yellow wire. Let's take our red wire. We're gonna insert it into the through hole labeled 5V. All right, so this is a slightly different soldering technique because it's not a pad that we pre-tinned, it's a through hole. The wire was already pre-tinned, so we inserted the pre-tinned wire into the hole. And now we just apply some heat and add some solder. A little extra heat for good measure. All right, we'll repeat for the black and yellow wires. Got our wires attached, we'll give them a little We'll twist. Next thing we're gonna do is attach our receiver antenna. This is another piece that we're gonna float over the flight board. I think I'm gonna position it like this to give a little added security to the antenna. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run the antenna over the top of the receiver, just like we did with the video transmitter. These things can be a little tricky, so just take your time. There we go clicks right into place. Okay, had to do it at an angle, but I want to run the I want to run the antenna over the surface of the receiver so now that it's snapped on, we're just going to rotate it just like that. There we go. Now the reason I wanted to do that, they gave us this piece of heat shrink. I'm going to heat shrink it down. And that's going to give us a really uh, secure antenna. It's not going to pop off that connector. Right, now, the area we're going to be working is down here, so let's remove our protective electrical tape, reposition it so we can get to this area of pads, okay? We don't need it to be as long as it's gonna sit there, so let's see how short can we get away with. And we'll just take a little length off. The first pad to the right of the larger pad, that's our receiver pad right there. Then we're gonna skip one to get to five volts right there. And then right next to it is our ground pad. This is, uh, may not look like it quite yet, but this is a drone. This is everything that you need to fly. Just gotta plug the camera in, we got our video transmitter, got our receiver, got our flight board, got our ESCs, got our motors. We're coming along. The last thing that we need to solder on 
is the plug for the battery. I've been stripping everything with my fingernail, but this is a little bit thicker wire, so we'll actually use wire strippers. What a concept, huh? This is thicker wire than what we've been working with, so the strands can definitely kind of fray out, so I'm just giving it a bit of a twist. Now once we pre-tin it, it won't get messy ever again. This is, like I said, thicker wire, so it's gonna take a little bit longer. The other ones, we just barely had to tap and it did it, but this one, see, we're, we're having to work it a little more. I just like to twist around, look at all sides of the wire. See, look, look, I got solder on the top side, but as I rotate it over, there's not solder on the underside. So I'm just gonna apply heat to the bottom, and that will bring the solder through, and now, look, there it is. It's like kinda got a blob there, we can just try and wick it off. You just want the solder to be like in the strands. With the stack, they gave us a XT30 connector, and this is what we're gonna solder on. The flat side is for the positive, and the curved side is for the negative. There are markings on it. Again, plus is red, minus is black. Got a little scrap of heat shrink here. I don't know what, I don't know what size this is. You want something that when you insert it over the wire, it's got a little bit of play so that you can slide it on and then shrink it, but obviously not too big, not too small. So we're just gonna trim a piece there, a little second piece. We're gonna slide this onto the wire and get it as far away from where the heat is gonna be. So we're soldering the connector on this end, so I'm sliding it all the way down there because I don't want it to shrink at all due to the heat of the soldering iron. So get it all the way down there. If you have spare connectors, I like to put a connector in while I'm doing the soldering. It will just help dissipate the heat through the connector a little bit better and prevent the, um, the metal contact from getting loose in the plastic. Make sure you solder to the right side. So I've just got it supported with the tool there. Take this other tool, set that so that the wire is getting pressed down into the barrel. I'm gonna apply heat to the pre-tin wire and some extra solder, and we wanna see it all flow together. Beautiful. Wick off a little of the extra. That's what we want to see. Looks pretty good. And now we're going to slide our heat shrink that hopefully didn't shrink. And it looks like we're in luck. Right up over that. Little heat. Beautiful. All the soldering should be totally done now. And I say should because if there's a problem, we might have to go back and do some fixing. So to test it, we're not just going to plug in a battery. We're going to use a smoke stopper. There's a couple versions of this. This is an electronic smoke stopper. This is more of a DIY solution with automotive bulb. Essentially what a smoke stopper does is it prevents a higher amount of current from being drawn. So it will let you power up your drone, but if there is some source of high current draw, like a motor running or even worse, a short circuit, this will prevent too much current from being flown because of the resistance of the light bulb or because of the circuitry of this. So you can get these in XT60 as we have here, or in XT30. I mean, this is, like I said, DIY, you could just make this. I happen to not have an XT30 version here. Um, like I said, you can get one, but if you don't, you can also make a little adapter. This end is where I'm gonna plug in the battery, and this is the end that would normally plug into the drone. Obviously, it's too big. So here we have a female connector that will just slip on there. And then now we've got a male connector that that could plug in there. We're just gonna solder these together real quick, but it doesn't have to be the best soldering because this isn't something you're actually gonna fly with. It's just for testing. So now we've got the smoke stopper that we have laying around. I know it seems weird to plug such a large battery into a drone, but voltage is voltage. The capacity is not gonna affect anything. The, you know, it's just bigger because of higher capacity. These components are rated for four cell. This is a big four cell battery. We're gonna be flying it on three, but it's just what we got. So here we go. All right, everything's looking good. This is green. If the smoke stopper was triggered, I think it just shuts off altogether. We wouldn't be getting the beeps. We wouldn't be getting the status lights from our components. Looks like our build checks out. I have confidence that everything is hooked up correctly. Final assembly. We're gonna attach these side plates to the quad and the camera is gonna be sandwiched between them. So we're just gonna pick one and we're going to attach the camera to the side plate in advance. Um, the connector is the top of the camera, so that should be facing up. This long swoop, that's gonna be the top of the drone, so just line it up like that. We're not gonna tighten it up all the way, just get it in there loose. Get it in there loose, it can still move freely, okay? 
Uh, now we're going to take our standoffs and our screws that came with the frame and we're going to attach the standoffs to the side plate. All the standoffs are the same size. They are 19 millimeters, so don't worry about grabbing the right ones. All the screws that come with the frame are also the same size. They're six millimeters long, so you don't have to worry about that either. Again, just finger tight. We've got our camera and our three horizontal standoffs attached to one of the side plates. The other side plate is gonna join on the frame. Before we do that, we need to attach our little upper plate with a vertical standoff. That's what this hole is for in the back of the frame. So I'm just gonna go like that, push the wires so that the wires are going to the side of that one rear vertical standoff. All the hardware for the electronics and the camera has been a 1.5 millimeter hex head. The hardware for the, uh, the frame construction is a two millimeter hex head. So watch out for contact with the capacitor. If you added a capacitor, it might hit that. So we're just gonna beep, bend it forward. There we go. And it'll just stick up and it'll be fine. We'll go back through and tighten up everything later. What we wanna do is the two electronic components that we are gonna float above the stack. We're gonna tape them together like that. Let's get a little little piece. This isn't to hold anything down, it's just kind of to hold things kind of more in place. Stick that to the uh, back of the video transmitter. There we go. And we'll stick the receiver right like that. Give it a press. There, that's fine. So now we've got our sandwich. Here's one of our side pieces. Before we fit anything into place or thread any hardware, we wanna make sure we remember to plug in our camera. Here we go. We want this front tab on the bottom plate to insert through the side plate there. I'm just gonna take some wiggling. Simultaneously, we need this rear tab on that small upper plate to insert through this rear slot on the side plate. There we go. All right, we're in place. Now we've got our other side plate. Gonna hold it all together, hold this sandwich together before we wrap it up. There we go. Okay, and hold it with one hand there. Now we're just gonna take our screws and get it snugged up, not too tight again. Now right, we're switching tools, putting down the two millimeter, picking up the 1.5, getting another screw for the camera. Now we just need to secure these electronics that are poking up through the top. We're gonna make a little pouch out of electrical tape, so I'm pulling them back. We've got slack in the wire. It's kind of a longish piece. We're just gonna insert it under the side plates. We can reach in from the top, grab it, just get it coming on through. So now we've got this tape running underneath the side plates. So the sticky side is facing up toward us. We're gonna take our little electronics pieces here. You know what, I'm a little bit nervous about the uh, video transmitter touching the carbon fiber of the side plates. So here, let's go back here. Got a piece of heat shrink here. We're gonna put this over our video transmitter as well. The other thing this is going to do is also help hold down this antenna that's just snapped on there. So yeah, we've got extra security, we've got better electrical insulation, all good things. Okay, now I stick these two pieces back together, setting them down on the sticky side of the tape, like that. Now we just bring this up here. I'm gonna take this other side, wrap it around. We can cut off a little bit of excess. Looks pretty good. This antenna is coming from our video transmitter. We're just gonna leave it flopping like this. This is our receiver antenna. It's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna see what I can do to protect it. I think I'm gonna stick it down through here and then back up between this rear plate and standoff. And then if I really wanna protect that antenna, you can take a zip tie and wrap it around the rear standoff like so. Zip. We've got our antenna run alongside our zip tie tail. We want the tail to be just a bit longer. Cut it there. Got another small piece of heat shrink. Measure it out. Now you want to go around and actually tighten up all the screws. Get this thing locked into place. If you're new to setting up Betaflight, make sure to look for a link in the description for another video that walks you through a basic Betaflight setup. It is with one of the larger drones, but it's all the same stuff. It's all gonna be very similar, but I'll cover some quick points here. So jumping in and look for target, F-Y-O. Also type dump in the CLI. Look at the top and see what this is. Okay, Fury F4 OSD. So that's the name of the target that this diatone board uses. So now I go into the firmware flashing section and look for 
Fury F4 OSD. Grab the newest version. Right now that's 3.5.7. Full chip erase, load firmware, flash firmware. Let's do this. All right, we've got the new firmware in there. We open up to this setup tab. Good thing to check is that all the orientation is right. So tilting the nose forward results in the model being tilted forward. Tilting it to the right, model tilts to the right. Yaw, lines up, okay. So all the sensors are aligned. We're not gonna fix anything. It's just a good thing to check. Jumping right to the ports tab. Now, if we remember, uh, default, it's got UART1 for Serial RX, but that's not what we did. I think that's the default because if you use the S bus pad for FreeSky, it's on UART1. So we're gonna turn off Serial RX for UART1 and we're gonna turn it on for UART6, which is what we used. UART3 is what we connected for our video transmitter telemetry. So over here in peripherals, we are going to select IRC Tramp. As I mentioned, this particular video transmitter uses Tramp protocol. Save and reboot. All right, let's jump in there to ports. Make sure that our changes were saved. Now we're into configuration. We're gonna set our gyro and PID loop. I'm gonna leave accelerometer on, barometer's already off. Let's select the right serial language. We use Spectrum, so Spectrum 2048. Scroll down, looks good, looks good. Ooh, check these two things. That way your motors will act like a beeper if uh, if you so desire. ESC protocol, we use D-Shot 600. That's fine, that's fine. Arming, the default maximum arm angle is 25 degrees. That means if your quad is like tilted more than 25 degrees, you can't arm it. it. Might be a good safety feature for some, but I like to be able to arm no matter what, to be able to shake out of trees or take off an incline, whatever I need to do. So set that to 180. Save and reboot. Now we're into pin tuning. I'm just going to throw in some numbers that I know are going to be pretty close. For the most part, I'm just having to lower everything because the defaults are more set up for a five inch quad and this is a two inch quad. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So I'm putting in some numbers that I know are going to be pretty close. I'm using actually the exact same rates that I use on my five inch, but I'm going to get this thing dialed in a little bit more and there will be a link in the description to a screen cap of all my final settings. So if you build the exact same thing, it'll give you a really close starting point to what I fly, but you'll probably still want to tweak it and tune it to your exact preferences and whatever particulars there may be about your build. Over in filters. Okay, we could probably turn off some of the second stage low pass filters, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it on. The next tab is the receiver tab, but before we can do that, we need to actually bind the transmitter. Uh, as I mentioned, if it's free sky, you might need to hit a button or something like that, but it's spectrum and we'll use a CLI command. So we're gonna go down into CLI. In CLI, we're gonna type set spectrum underscore sat underscore bind equals nine. Type save, hit enter unplug from the computer. We set it up so that next time the board is powered, it's going to put the receiver in bind mode. And we're gonna plug in a battery here. I'm looking in between the tape. It is blinking. We got some fast blinking orange light in there. Got my radio. I'm gonna get a little bit of separation so I don't overwhelm the signal. We are bound. Perfect. Now I'm gonna leave the battery plugged in so that the receiver stays powered. Plug the quad back into the computer. Now we can get things set up on the receiver tab. Select Spectrum there. Hit save. Okay, I already have the endpoints in my radio properly set up so that full stick deflection one way goes to 1,000, full stick deflection the other way goes to 2,000. You need to do that for all of your control channels and confirm the correct direction. Again, for more detail, link in the description to a more focused video. Now we are going into the modes tab. I already have channels assigned to switches that I like to use. Here's my arm switch. All right. Angle mode. Here's my angle mode. Beeper, normal. Beeper. Air mode. Air mode. Beeper. Beeper. There's my turtle mode. All right, that should be everything I need to do. Hit save. Normal. Now we're going down into the motors tab. Spin up the motors just a little bit. 
All right, check our motor direction. It tells us all the motor numbers on the screen, and there's an arrow showing the direction they should be turning, so I'm just gonna grab it lightly with my finger. One is turning the correct direction. Two is turning the wrong direction. Three is turning the wrong direction. And four is turning the right direction. They're actually all turning the same direction, because if you remember, we just connected the three wires straight to the corresponding three pads on the 4 and one ESC. So that makes sense that they're all spinning the same direction. And the two motors that we need to change direction are two and three. We're gonna have to use a separate program for that, so we'll, we'll come back to that. On-screen display, we're gonna set this up just the way we like it. Put a little battery voltage. I like timer two. That's the timer for how long we've been armed. Craft name, we'll stick this up here. But we should name this thing. Let's go back to configuration. What do we call this? Dribble it. Sweet. All right, this should be all set up. Let's unplug it from the computer. Let's check our arming. Disarm. Arm. It arms. Disarm. Check our beeper. Beeper. Nice. Oh. The last thing we need to do is change motor direction. All right, we've jumped over to our BL Heli configurator. These are BL Heli S ESCs, so we are able to use the Chrome based configurator that works on Mac. If you're using a more expensive stack that uses BL Heli 32, you might have to go to a Windows. But here we go, let's see what we're working with. We needed to reverse the direction of motor two and motor three. What else do we wanna do? All oh, this is fine, we'll turn on brake on stop. We're using D-Shot, so these PPM settings don't really matter. Right setup. Disconnect. Try arming. Everything, everything seems to be good. Today I'm using some Avan props. There's lots of good two inch options out there. I like these the best. The only thing I don't like is that the hubs are extra thick because of their shape. So you're gonna need some extra long screws. Just doing props on these things are a total pain because it's two screws per prop. People complain about with the five inch it being one nut. No, 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 no. Once you get to the micros, you're getting real tedious here. For prop direction, remember that the props are spinning inwards, so you need the airfoil to be oriented the right way. We've got a little pad that comes with our frame kit. It's for the battery, to give it a little extra padding. Just plop that right on there. We're just gonna run this around the frame under the four in one. Look at that. It works. Disarm. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's build video. This is the Driblet Micro Freestyle Drone. A lot of fun. Remember to check the description for a list and links to everything we use today and visit our website, rotoriot.com, where you can get all this stuff and anything else that you might want. So whether this is your first build or you've been building for a while, I hope you learned something today. Thank you guys for joining and we will see you next time.